Shoot. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay. I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup, so you can become the character of your dream. Today's cosplay is Tifa Lockhart from the new Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's kind of not new to me, but the fact that so many people are playing it is new and exciting. So this outfit is actually her mature dress that you choose for the wall market when you go see Don Corneo. This is a very highly anticipated outfit that I've been wanting to make ever since they showed this in the trailers and previews of this game. Anyways, I hope you enjoy binge watching my tutorials and videos, so subscribe down below to never miss out on any future cosplay content or any content that I produce. I feel really weird not knowing what to do with my hands sometimes in the, like, the opening of my videos. If you guys want me to try the original dress, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Should I try making the original one now that I've made the new one? I don't know. This outfit, I actually used blue taffeta. This does not stretch. There's no stretch on this fabric. I highly recommend getting a fabric that does stretch, that way you can get the ruffle hem that you want you can actually move around. I used a pattern from the past that I created on my channel and it was my Hestia cosplay. Go ahead and check that out in the description or you can check it in the cards in this little I button, I think it's here or here. One of the two, it's on the side somewhere. Because we're on lockdown, I used all the materials that I have at home. I know this might be difficult for some of you guys who are new to cosplaying and are not cosplay hoarders like me. That says a lot about me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, I am a cosplay hoarder, I have lots of things, and I like to make sure that I have enough things to make new cosplays with. If you have any questions about the materials that I used, um, techniques that I used, anything about this cosplay that is unfamiliar, or if you have problems finding something on your own, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to help you out with that. So, you know what time it is. It is tutorial time! Okay, I'm sorry. The fabric I am using is a very nice blue taffeta. I got this at Villa Tex in Los Angeles. Now this is not a stretch taffeta. Surprise! I wish it was, but unfortunately this color was too good to pass up and a good deal. So what you want to go ahead and do is prep your material by ironing it. Tifa's dress is very similar to my Hestia outfit that I made last year. So go ahead and check out that video to see how I made that pattern. Go ahead and use the previous pattern to cut out Tifa's outfit. I attempted to cut this out on the bias thinking that this fabric would stretch. This turned out to be a lie and the fabric did not stretch at all. And I'm telling you this because I'm editing the video. So just go ahead and pin it out normally. For the middle piece, I'm separating it into two pieces. I'm keeping the top a halter and wide cut and making sure that I gather it later. The skirt piece is actually going to be one center piece cut on fold. I'm not going to completely copy the Hestia pattern here, but make sure you have enough to gather for the breast area on both the top and the bottom. Next, I took the halter pieces to the sewing machine and surged the edges. I didn't know how much I needed, so I just played it safe and surged everything else as well. So I took the pieces that I meant for the booby parts and I pleated them in the front part together and I pleated them towards the front, not away. And then I made sure that they went all the way to the back part and I am going to sew them down. Sorry, I had a hiccup. So now let's go ahead and continue sewing. So this is the lace that I will be using for Tifa. You could actually see what it looks like here. Now the lace itself actually has little roses. It's kind of hard to make out on the camera, but I hope you can see it. I'm going to be cutting this in half, so I will be removing the black ribbon first and then going around the entire perimeter. So I want to get the exact measurement of how much I'll need. So I went around it pinning it and now I have the measurement of the back part so I can cut it in half. I'm going to use half of it on the front part and then half on the back part. This is the only time I'll really be needing the lace. So let's go. Here I am trimming off the excess. This way I have one solid piece. Now I have to make sure that I don't stab myself with the needles by removing all of the needles off of the dress, off of the lace, and then cutting the lace in half. As a disclaimer, you could actually go out and buy small black lace trim that goes at the edges so it's a lot easier for you. Honestly, I think it would be a lot easier because the things that I do is just so much harder. But don't forget, we are actually in lockdown during this video creation and I am using everything that I have at home. Alright, go ahead and take your lace and sew it all around the edges of your neckline and your backline. This is the final stitches. Woo! 
using some of that lace ribbon uh, that I used on the dress and cut in half. I'm actually going to be using that for the collar piece. I'm going to be tying it around. I made a small little bow first. Now I'm going to undo it. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. And I will be using this much and cutting it and adding it to the back neck piece of the dress. To seal the edges, I'm going to burn it. Fire! I'm going to take out a ruler and a really old piece of material that you saw in a previous video recently, which was my Battle Bunny ribbon, and I'm going to make strips out of it. I went ahead and used the ruler as my guard line. I'm going to cut them into long strips, as long as I can. So let's go ahead and cut them. So what I did do was I cut one of these big strippies in half. You can see the huge difference and so we're going to be taking this to the dress. I'm going to go ahead and cover these raw edges of this lace part with the little trim. Off camera I sewed the trim down next to the lace, first making sure I liked the positioning and then tacked it down. Now I'm showing you guys that I'm sewing down the other side of the trim so it lays flat and does not come up. So now that I got the entire back side done, I need to do the front side of it, but don't worry, I already trimmed off the excess here and I'm going to be adding the next details afterwards. You want the base of these little lines down first and then add the detailing on top, not the vice versa. It looks like the in-game image shows it being on top of the other pieces, so that's what we're going off of. I went ahead and cut more of these strips. Next part, I had to dig around, and first thought, I thought for this little part that goes in between her lady parts, I totally thought that I was going to be able to use a giant keyring, such as this. This turned out to be too big because the straps that I made are like this big. So whenever I need, so I only need to fit six of these. So there's definitely too much space for this. I found this key ring. It's actually a lot smaller than the one that I just showed you. It can go inside, but the downfall is it's got all this stuff on. So now I gotta remove it. This is what the back of her bra looks like. It's crisscrossed. After I tried it on and marked with pins where I need to gather the neckline. So the neckline gets gathered and then this part gets like normal large, like it's nice and straight. I'm going to gather this by hand first and then I'm going to cover it with the black piece here going all the way down to where this ring is. Kind of like that. When you look at Tifa's outfit, it actually shows you that it has the extra line going down. I'm not really a fan of that, but you know. So I hand stitched it down, like I said, and now I positioned it to go across and down. I actually folded in the fabric a little bit more over here because I wanted it to show more of my cleavage. I'm not going to be disappointed on how it looks because next I have to add another part of trim on the other side so it matches this end. So I'm going to sew it down on the left side first with the normal stitch and then I'm going to sew it again with this underneath it making the right stitch. I still have this really long tail. I want to keep this tail there so I can add the metal ring. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew down this lace part underneath the rest of the strap so it lays nice and flat like the rest of its brothers. Go ahead and repeat the same process when you're done with it to the other strap and that way, you know, I just cut down on filming time. Just in case you're having a problem with the other side matching and making sure that it lines up correctly, you could actually pin the sides together and then work your way all the way around the entire perimeter with pins so it's exactly the same and then pin it down where you start your little fabric piece and then you make sure you mimic it on the other side going all the way to the front. I also did this to the front side making sure I folded in the fabric a little bit more. Then using this pin, that's why it's laid different, I'm, that's where I'm going to end the transition and then start blending it in with the front piece. So for these edge parts, I don't think I showed you on the other side, I'm actually going to cut it down to match where this little flap is. And slowly cut, because I want it to blend nicely. You can see that it blends nice into that corner. I'm going to take my lace and then I'm going to actually cut around this one of these little corners so it's really nice and clean. Now if you don't like how your corner looks, you could always go down to the next part. Now that I have a very nice clean edge, I'm going to put this underneath that new black layer here. And then go ahead and see like how it blends just really nicely now. Now I'm going to start from this triangle top part and then work my way down. Before I add the ring, I'm going to sew down this part a little bit more, about 1 inch to 3 inches, like 10 centimeters long. I want to make sure that it's nice and secure. 
That way the lace doesn't pop off so it looks like it's one strip. Using the seams right here, I'm going to take another strip of black pleather and then sew it down from the edge and then attach it to the ring. Now I'm not going to actually attach it from here because it doesn't really line up properly. So I'm going to let it float just a tiny bit. You can actually see some of the close-ups that the actual straps here on the booby line and under booby booby line it is actually a plain leather strap. Now you can feel free to use the lace edges if you want. I'm going to not do that. To show you a close up of where we are at. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking how it looks. So then we'll put that one there. Cool, right guys? Take out a giant bowl and some tissue paper and trace the bowl around it. This way we're going to create a very nice circular ruffles. We're not done yet. Using a ruler, I'm going to measure out three inches from the outside to the inside and continue marking this all around the circle bowl edge. After marking all of it, create a nice circle on the inside and cut it all out. Take this new donut pattern and pin it to the fabric multiple times. I pinned this about four times, I think. To prevent stretching, base stitch the inside edge. I'm going to cut it in the center. And this is going to give me some of my strip. Now I want to clip the edges along the top here so it will turn to lay flat. No amount of ironing will ever make this lay flat. So I've made four cuts here. You can see now it lays so much better versus the rest of the garment, which if I go to this side, it doesn't lay at all. Instead, it puckers. So you want to cut the entire top trim Area. Now, I decided to use a black thread when serging the bottom hem of the flounces. You don't have to do this. You could use blue thread or you can use fray check. Just make sure these edges do not go unfrayed. After you're done serging all the edges, sew all the pieces together. I'm going to sew my ruffle to some leftover trim. That way it lays nice and flat when I attach it to the bottom of the dress. Now we're up here at the ironing board. We're going to carefully iron this out, making sure we don't have too hot of an iron and just make sure that all the stitches are happy in their new home. I'm going to do a hand stitch in the top part of the lace so it'll help me gather it. First, I'm going to pin this to the dress and then pull this thread after. When I'm happy with how the ruffles are spaced, I'm going to lock them in place with sewing them to the dress. Okay, I can't jump high enough. Um. <laughs> Ugh. The bottom ruffle is now on. So what I'm going to do is mark how long this is going to be. I'm going to add a snap here, then make a brand new bow. That way I don't have to worry about tying it perfectly every time and I'll just be all like whoop. This one. Now I just need to sew it together like this. I just want to rant that it took me about 15 minutes to make this bow right here. Perfect that it fits my neck right here. And I'm really scared to make it any adjustments because I don't want to mess it up. But this is the type of bow, it's one single knot. It's not tied really tight, but I don't want it to get messed. Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> a few inches later. Someone want to tell me what that is? What is that? It looks like a flower. It looks like not a flower. I can't tell what it is. I decided that this was a poinsettia pin for the bow instead of leaving it blank and adding. Like a child, I folded a scrap piece of fabric into thirds. And I cut out a diamond shape, leaving the center intact like a snowflake. I'm going to burn the edges so it doesn't fray. I cut out two flowers and folded them in half to make it thicker and add more dimension. And folded some of the petals to make it more of a star shape. Using a needle and black thread, I sewed the two pieces together in the center. Get out that black bow you made earlier and sew down the flowers lower than the knot center. The flower is lower than the center of the bow. Two small pearls on top of the flower. My lower pearl is slightly bigger than the one on top of it. Finally, add this piece to the front of the choker and you are finished with the dress. Optional, this step isn't super necessary, but I top stitched the ruffles to help them lay flat and then I ironed it. Luckily, I had these huge earrings from the past. Possible, check your jewelry stash and look for some big earrings or look for a big crescent-shaped pendant. She only wears one earring, so you really only need one of them. I know these are black, but we are going to give them a gold makeover. I first painted the back gold, and then I painted the front gold. I relocated the earring hook to the side to make it more of a crescent shape like a moon. I decided I wanted to keep the jewels black for extra added bit of detail. Now time for the belt. I definitely hate this part of the cosplay the most. I really think it's the ugliest thing to grace Tifa's wardrobe. But alas, I will show you and tell you how I made this. 
I cut the same strips of pleather from my ruler. I sewed them together to make one long strip of pleather. Since, you know, I only have scraps, I can't just cut out one. Figured it would be easier to have the strip in one long piece versus small pieces before cutting it in half. And that's exactly what I did, and it was easy. Oh yeah, make sure to cut this in half. Next, I folded it horizontally and turned it into a spaghetti by sewing it again. I took the time to wrap the thin pleather spaghetti around my hips twice. I wanted to make sure that I had the right length. This is going to vary for everyone seeing as we are not all the same sizes. Just play with it until you're happy with the length and then cut off the excess. Make sure you have a little bit to hang at your hip. I figured now that I have the belt base, it's important to find the biggest pearls I have. I have this leftover grab bag of pearls I got from Joann's that I used for my wedding dress for last year. I have so many leftover, but the big ones, I only have like 10, so I can't lose these. Because I'm a cosplay hoarder, I buy random things not knowing when I'll need them. This is the case with this string. It's coated braided cotton. It's exactly the right string I need to attach the pearls with onto the belt. With the remainder of the pleather, I'm going to start cutting out little triangle strips and then sewing the corners. This way it doesn't come undone and it's thicker and the other side isn't this ugly upholstery looking thing. So I know it's not exactly triangles, but I figured this would be the best way to reduce fabric weight. So as you just saw, I just folded over a corner, sewed it all around the perimeter, and now I'm going to cut it off the base fabric. For these, I made two large ones, three medium ones, and three small ones. Make sure to have enough material left over to make the flowers that goes at the hip. So for the flower pieces, we're going to repeat the same process like we did with the necktie. We're going to create a flower first out of tissue paper, making sure it's the right size and shape, cut it out, and then make a smaller version. There are two different size flowers that goes on her hips. Make sure they're about medium and large sizes. With the remainder scrap remnants of my pleather, I'm going to cut out as many flowers as I can. I can definitely fit at least one of each, but I know if I space it correctly and put it towards the edge, I'll be able to have two of each, which actually worked out in the end. I made sure to wrap my mannequin with the belt first. I wanted it to crisscross at the right spot and end at the correct hip. Once I did that, I started pinning the triangles in place on the mannequin and marked the belt where the placements are. This was a very tedious process that took a long time, but I'm really happy with the result. So this is what the belt looks like with all of the decorations on it. So I took a lot of time watching lots of footage, not playing the game because I don't own it, and trying to get it to lay the way that it looks on the actual game model and some of the references. I have so much time and effort put into the belt. Now let me run you through it. So this is a flower piece that actually is three, three pieces of le pleather sewn together. I added some dimension and later I'm going to be adding a bead here because there's a bead here. I don't know why. A lot of the beads are actually on here by this cording that I got. You did get to see that earlier. Now the pearls are fake pearls. I didn't have any like big wooden beads, but I think the pearls give it a nice little bit of classiness. These are actually supposed to be shaped differently. At the time when I was cutting this, I could only figure out that they were triangles. I also stitched them in place. This way they don't move and they lay correctly. I did this all around the top. Now to get the draping, I actually laid it around my mannequin until I got the draping that I wanted. It has, it starts here, crisscrosses here, then ends here. Now this is actually sewn together, so I can't take it off and on the way I want. If this becomes a problem later, I will fix it. So the pearls were actually easy to attach. I just made sure to rewrap the cords multiple times, that way it, got onto it, onto the string properly. You can see that I first did knots on the pearls, I cut extra string, and then I wrapped it around the material. Uh, I did this throughout. You can see that they're not all completely the same and they hang at different lengths because that's what's on the reference. Especially this one. Why, why is this one so low? I don't get it. Now the bottom of the tails here on the belt is kind of similar to the rest of it. It's uh, these little triangle parts, again, with a little bit of wrapped cording. This one has a knot, but this one has like this weird like wannabe doohickey thing, egg nut shape at the bottom. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm just going to add like a giant black bead here. I gotta look through my stashes all over my room and see if I can find a bead to go here and that will finish 
the belt. If you have any extra questions on the belt, please leave me a comment down below and I will be sure to address it as quickly as possible. Just letting you know, I kind of ran out of black pleather. So thank you Tifa for completely using up all my black pleather. To finish off the belt, I have these three beads that I thought were the best choices. Originally I was just going to go for this one, but I didn't want to lose the shape of it, so that's out of question. I kind of like this one, but I like the shattered glass look, so I'm going to keep that one. So I narrowed down my choices to this one. This one is not the right color that I want, so I'm going to be painting it with either paints like nail polish or acrylics. Because this nail polish dries fast, that's what I'm going to do so I can add it and it's going to seal it. But I also really like the texture, so I don't want to lose all the texture, so I'm going to be using two different paints and probably paint my nails at the same time. Originally, I was going to paint this with black nail polish, but then I decided I didn't have enough black nail polish, so technically I didn't decide it. So now I'm going to just go back and paint it with acrylic and then sew it onto the belt to call it finished. cons about this cosplay. One, pro. It looks really awesome despite it having this really ugly belt. Two, I had the perfect fabric and materials on hand to be able to make this cosplay, so I'm very fortunate. Sometimes it does pay off to hold on to those fabric scraps or just buy that fabric that you really love and think is amazing. Don't be upset that you don't have the right type of material. It may not stretch, it may stretch, but there's always ways around that. One of the things that makes me a little disappointed about this costume is that adding the trim actually rise the back part of it so it doesn't sit as low as I would like. Do I want to go back and fix it? No, I think it looks great. It gets covered by my hair anyways and it helps keep me a little bit warmer. So I'm going to keep it like that. Also, no, I don't have blue shoes. So what am I going to do about that? Do I need to make blue shoes? No, I think I'm just going to use a nice pair of black high heels. If I do wear this costume out, it's a little racy for my taste. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Check out some of my past cosplay videos, like here above my head. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember to stay inspired, be creative. And I will see you in a future video. Bye!